Good morning, everyone. It is so lovely to have you here, and thank you all already for lighting up that chat feature. Uh, I can see a bunch of lovely, lovely, lovely people saying lovely, lovely, lovely things. Uh, so honestly, thank you all so much for being here. Um, do pop in that chat feature where you're watching from. Um, I can already see people in Malaga, Amsterdam, um, <laughs> Bristol, <laughs> Cambridge, Newcastle, uh, Worthing, Yorkshire, Spain, uh, Stockfold, uh, wicked. Honestly, how awesome is that? It's so lovely to have you here. Um, don't forget, by the way, to uh, drop uh, to switch your chat messages. You'll see in the in the chat feature, you got the option to say two, and then it's got a colon, and then uh, it's got like a blue button for me that sort of says everyone. Uh, for you, if it says hosts and panelists, uh, don't forget to switch uh, that message to everyone so everyone can see your messages, not just the hosts and panelists. Today we have such a wicked session. Um, I'm so excited. Um, like as I was telling everyone uh, who's going to present earlier on that every time before a webinar, I usually have a sleepless night and usually that's out of nerves. But last night it was just out of excitement. Uh, I think we're going to have a lot of fun and let's keep that energy going as we can see in the chat feature. Um, it means the absolute world. So uh, as ever, I'll start off today's session with two challenges. Uh, the first challenge, as ever, is to keep that chat feature buzzing. I've already seen a, a chat comment come through from someone who said, it's been a little while since I've been here, and I'd forgotten that half the experience is all about that there chat feature. And it's so right. Every one of our presenters today will be looking to bring the energy, the insight, but honestly, it's so, so important that all of you watching in today also bring and match that energy. Uh, today is all about speed. It's about positivity. It's about being uplifted. It's about um, just energy. So, you know, it'd be great to sort of bring that throughout the duration of today's session. If you see something you agree with, uh, pop it in the chat feature. If you see something you find interesting, pop it in the, pop it in the chat feature. Let's make that a really, really great, vibrant place to be today. <clears throat> Second challenge, uh, we have six talks today for you. So there should be a bunch of takeaways in a whole load of different directions for you. So with that in mind, um, after today's session or even during today's session, if there's something that really resonates, then please do take the time to share it on social media. That's how we grow this community, but it's also how you can spark conversations with folks after today's session. Um, so uh, that's the second challenge. Uh, find something you love on social media, find something you love from today and post it on social media. It means the absolute world and uh, it makes a real big difference to how we grow this community. If that all sounds good, then let's start getting on with today's session. And usually it's at this point I'd be making a big long introduction saying very lovely things about our speakers. Well, in fact, today we've got six of them, so I'm not going to spend an awful lot of time going into every individual other than to say that every one of them has been through an application process, which uh, I spent two days going through all of the applications myself and uh, I just loved their talks. And it wasn't just because of the virtue of the talks that stood by themselves. It was how every one of these talks have worked together uh, to create a session, which I think hopefully you're going to really enjoy. Um, happy birthday to Melanie <laughs> as well in the chat feature. That's wicked. <laughs> Thank you for spending it with us. Um, each talk today is going to last eight minutes. Um, so we're going to be working through them super quick. Um, so it's good for me to get out of the way in just one moment. The last thing to say, however, is a big, big thank you to the, the, today's featured sponsor. Uh, this week it's Content Square. Uh, Content Square are a bunch of human beings who are part of the community. So a lot of you will remember Sahana, who delivered an amazing talk on imposter syndrome over a year ago, uh, but is still one of the ones that's quoted back to me on the regular. Um, they're also the team who host our London event, which means to say that they've given an awful lot to this community. Um, Content Square make web analytics so much easier. So whether it's heat mapping, whether it's just general data from your website and how people use your website, Content Square are a phenomenal company that make it so much easier to understand how people use your website, which in turn helps you uh, convert them much better or just help people through your site to give them the information you need. Big, big fans of them on a human level, but also on a product level. Uh, a couple of days ago, you would have seen that um, 
I put in the, the email, you may or may not have seen, there was a benchmark report. It's a really in-depth, really great piece of content that uh, Content Square put together. I'll link it after today's session and I'd highly recommend you to check it out. Also a big thank you to our other sponsors, Attest, uh, Hrefs, Impression, Content Cal, Redgate, Cambridge Marketing College, Brand Recruitment, Gravity Global and Third Light. I'll mention those on rotation as we go and into season seven as well which will be announced very soon so yes thank you helen <laughs> in big capital letters saying thank you sponsors it's it's really appreciated um we wouldn't be able to do what we do without them so uh that's my introduction done um so our first speaker today is alice from dark coffee so uh alice it's uh, it's over to you Thank you, Joe, and morning, everybody. This is like so crazy to be talking to the marketing meetup people. I'm dead excited to be sharing with you today. And thank you so much for making the time, all of you, because um, I'm sure it hasn't escaped your notice that as a marketer, life is pretty busy. We're busy people. And this is true whether you're employed, whether you're self-employed, or whether you're a business owner, just kind of making it up as you go along, like, uh, like someone I know. Hello, I see you. I am you. Um, so yes, today I'm talking to you about how can we overcome this busyness? How can we cut through the overwhelm and get a sense of self and a kind of steady foundation from which to spring? That's what I'm going to be talking to you about today. If we haven't had the pleasure of meeting before, my name's Alice. And as Joe says, I run a company called Dark Coffee. And my slide here says badass in business, not just because it's my new job title, I'm gonna try and emphasize, but because this is actually what I help people to do. My mission is to help people be badass in business through my own special brand of well-being. So today what I'm gonna help you with is something mystical and magical that you might have heard of before. It's called a daily routine. Now, if you see this and it strikes fear into your heart, it's partially the slide probably in this obnoxious graphic that I've put together, but also it's because of the reputation that the daily routine has, it's been kind of co-opted as a phrase by self-help gurus and, you know, everybody posting on LinkedIn. And it's touted as this kind of very rigid structure that you like have to follow um, in order to have a successful life and career. So you might think about things like the 4am wake up call, no thanks, cold showers, also no. Uh, and you know, casual 10k run before breakfast. And I just think it's, it's kind of bullshit. Sorry, Joe. Um, it's, it's mistaken. It's not true. And I want to bust this myth with you today. All a daily routine is, or all it should be, I should say, is a series of good habits that are strung together to give you structure and a sense of place in your day. It's to kind of ground you in where you are. And it should be a good thing. It should be a nice, enjoyable thing that we all look forward to. But unfortunately, I feel like that's not quite the case. So let's have a, a look. Let's just imagine what life would be like without a daily routine. I'm going to use a scapegoat for this example so you don't feel like I'm sort of yelling at you directly. And my scapegoat is called Jim. And he has his hideous kind of flipper hands, which came out of my pen. I don't know why. Uh, but this is Jim. So Jim's woken up this morning to the casual sound of his alarm cutting through the piece of his sleep. And he, he's got a really busy day ahead of him. And so he drags himself across the floor. He's had a horrible night's sleep because he had a deadline he was working towards. So he's not well rested at all. Drags himself over to that alarm. And he thinks, you know what? I've got a busy day ahead. So bleary eyed with his hideous flippered hand, he starts scrolling through his phone. And um, he thinks, you know what? I'm gonna be useful. I'm gonna be productive. I'm gonna answer my emails. I'm gonna catch up on social media, see what's happened in the last five hours. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a look at my schedule, so I'm getting getting myself in the right headspace. I'm getting my head in the game for this this day that I'm gonna have. No harm, right? No. Bad idea. Bad idea, Jim. He's a fool. He's fallen into this very common productivity trap that so many of us might fall, find ourselves falling into, and that is we try and cram as much product productive productive time into our day as we can any spare minute that we have we're trying to cram it with something useful to fill that time think of every time you're waiting in line somewhere or every time you know you're some, you're waiting for someone on a webinar for instance but actually this is a really bad way to operate or to try and operate because it doesn't actually work for our brain chemistry science lesson this is my very highly detailed picture of the human brain what our brains need to do in order to function well is switch between a few different modes. I'm not going to get too technical because I'm not a neuroscientist, I know, but it needs to switch between a few different modes. So if you think of this as work mode, play mode and rest mode, 
they all work together like cogs in a machine. So if you're always trying to turn that work dial, if you're always trying to crank it and just keep going, keep going, keep going, you're going to run into friction because that cog cannot move anymore if the work and the rest dials are not working as well. And this is because our brains just need to have their downtime in the same way as like when you have a computer, you need to shut it down, you need to back it up, regulate. If you just keep it switched on and plugged in all the time, you'll start to hear it whirring and you're going to have a horrible time. So this is where your daily routine comes in. It's a regular opportunity for you every day to give yourself some time to spend on rest and play, even if you don't do it for the rest of the day. So I'm going to help you do this with a very, very quick and easy technique that I call bookending. What your bookends are are tiny pockets of self-focused time, one at the beginning of the day, one at the end of the day. Anything else that you have going on in your day fits between these two little catches of time, like books betwixt two bookends, hence the name. So what do these bookends involve? Well, the cool thing about this technique is that it's completely non-prescriptive. It's not a case of saying you have to be up at this time every day. You have to go and do this activity. You have to do this as like all the self-help gurus will tell you, like follow this regimen. Because again, our brains don't work like that. We're very organic kind of wafty creatures and our energy levels don't work in that kind of linear fashion. So if you try and force yourself into that regimen, you're going to have a bad time. So all that you have to do with these bookends is think to yourself, what would feel fun for me right now? Or what would feel restful for me right now? And it can fluctuate day to day. You can decide on the morning that you wake up what you want to do with that pocket of time. And a little goes a really long way with this. I'm talking 20 minutes. So even if you have kids, if you have a spouse, if you have other people running around, you can carve out 20 minutes for yourself because... I hate to say it, but I do think some of us probably spend more than 20 minutes scrolling on our phone first thing in the morning. I know that was actually me this morning. So it's irony of irony that I'm giving this talk to you right now. Um, but put in the chat now, as I'm saying this, what's coming to mind for you? What kind of activities do you think of when I say something restful? A caveat to this is that it's self-focused time, meaning no one else is involved. So ignore your children, put your dog outside, put your partner outside. This is for you because so much of the rest of your day will be dominated by other people, whether you acknowledge it or not. It's going to be emails popping off. It's going to be messages. Your day is already held hostage by other people. So this is your time for you. So it might look like, you know, one of my clients, he just he just says, all I do in the morning is have a coffee by myself in silence before his four year old wakes up. And it's the best part of his day. Well, I'm sure it gets better after that, but he always calls it the best part of his day. Um, you know, you might do something creative. You might casually do some doodles for a presentation. These are just random examples, guys. Just anything that pops off to mind. So I'm going to have a look at the chat now. What's going off in there? Ooh, I can't see it podcast on a walk yes love that yep cycling yoga yeah activity like I've used this picture of a woman just kind of going for it because I'm a big fan of a dance party you don't need to do anything really formal you don't need to do a 5k you don't need to do yoga just because everyone else is doing it um Alice has a great podcast called dark coffee it's actually recently rebranded so it's called mind over grind but thank you Kate <laughs> these are all really great suggestions so remember all the all the rules are for this are that it's got to be fun and it's got to be restful. So if you want to have a really leisurely start to your morning, you can do something relaxing and restful, maybe do a bit of journaling, a bit of self-reflection, playing piano, Emma James, look at you. <laughs> Walking in the evenings, that's a lovely idea. Yeah, I'd say ditch the friend and just walk alone. <laughs> but maybe that's just me being antisocial. But honestly, 20 minutes to yourself in the morning and evening, this is a game changer, particularly if you're an extrovert and you don't spend a lot of time by yourself. Bring back that OG lockdown feeling. So just as a kind of closing point, I want you to think of this as the espresso of your day. A little goes a really, really long way. It doesn't need to be an hour. You don't need to wake up at 4 a.m. You just have to be consistent. And this is just the one habit you can cultivate to help you with that. So as my closing argument, I hope that helps you. It's a really simple technique for you to implement. Uh, if you take nothing else away from today, be less gym, try this out and feel more like your badass self. Thank you. Back to Joe in the studio. <laughs> amazing i have a feeling that this session is going to turn out very very well thank you so much ellis that was wicked uh, <laughs> and i was on time yeah yeah <laughs> that was my biggest fear. <laughs> i love the uh the energy that's coming out of this session this morning uh thank you alice and thank you everyone as well for chatting throughout this the, the side chats going on about hammocks it's real uh so next uh coming up we have rebecca from O agency. Uh, so Rebecca, uh, it's it's over to you speaking all about TikTok. 
Thank you very much, Joe. I'm just going to share my screen and hope this works. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Thanks. Um, can everyone see that? We got you. Yeah. Perfect. So good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you, Joe, for having us. Um, and my lightning talk is going to be all about community building on TikTok. So who am I? Why are you looking at us on the screen? My name is Rebecca, um, aka Newcastle Lass on TikTok. I am the content marketing executive at O Agency. As of three weeks ago, I'm very new. Um, and over the last 18 months, I have built a community of over 41,000 people on my TikTok channel. Um, my TikTok community, uh, community is all about... Um, Newcastle, the northeast of England, and particularly small businesses, places to go, and just generally why the northeast of England is a great place. So, why community on, on TikTok? Why have I chosen community as a specific thing? So, these are parts of TikTok that I think are really important. So, to start with, TikTok helps you find your people. So, as either a business or an independent content creator, you want to find your people, your target audience, because that just makes sense. Nobody makes content to attract the wrong people. So TikTok's algorithm is great for that. Um, it can really help you find your audience, the right people for you, and the people that will naturally sort of want to see your content. You can connect authentically. So the Probably one, well, one of the biggest points I will give you today is that I think it's so important to be authentic on TikTok. If you aren't authentic, people watching will know. They'll see right through you and they'll scroll straight past and you won't get those views on your videos. People, people will want to connect with your video naturally if it's organic. So the more of yourself you can put into it, the more authentic you can be, the better. Um, and you can become a voice. So the reason I say it's, it's important to be authentic on TikTok is because you can become a voice for whatever it is that you're passionate about. So if you aren't, again, people will just scroll past your content. You need, you need a bit of passion behind you. Um, and like, I've just realized I've made a mistake on my uh screen there never mind um but whatever it is tiktok is a fantastic place for you to become a voice on your niche or your interest whatever that is um and because of the algorithm it will help you find the right people for you these are a very small selection of online content creators on tiktok who i think do a fantastic job of this um so this is lucy edwards michaela kb liam and francis i'm very sorry francis cannot pronounce your surname. Um, but if you're looking for examples of content creators that have done so well on TikTok by just being themselves and putting their voice out there and talking about whatever it is that they're passionate about, these people are great examples and they're one of so uh, they're four of so many. So if you want to look at an example, I highly recommend these four. Next up, what is a community on TikTok? What actually am I talking about? So Obviously, the technical part of TikTok is that it is made up of short form videos. The TikTok app is entirely made of videos. So you need to get to grips with making that content. You need to sort of try and feel comfortable and practice making that video content if you're not already well versed in it. Um, the good thing about uh, TikTok is because it works well as an authentic app, videos that are actually filmed directly from your phone and aren't too polished tend to do better than ones that look super professional, which makes it a really accessible app for everyone. Niches, which is the interesting bit. So I think the key to success on TikTok personally is to have some form of niche. Um, obviously, if you're a business, it, should be around your product or service but it can still be educational or funny and have that little hook to get people really interested in what it is you do and what you're talking about or if you're um, an independent content creator or just a human being because we're likely one of them as well <laughs> if you're a person making a tiktok channel then having a strong sort of interest or theme or something that links your videos together helps people to want to engage with you more and follow you so it can really help build your follow account if that's what you're interested in um, consistency is essential. Being consistent in you know, putting content out there regularly and keeping it consistent with whatever your theme or niche is, I think that's part of key to TikTok. Um, and a shared passion, which is the emotional bit. Um, so the more passionate you are about something, the
the more people will care about it for you, the more people will care about what you have to talk about. Um, there's no point in creating content that you're not actually interested in. Who wants to do that? Why would you waste your time? So whatever it is that your passion is, there will be someone else that shares that. I think part of the reason that my channel works well is because I'm so passionate about Newcastle. I love the small businesses that we've got here. I love Geordie people. I love the culture that we have here. I think we've got some amazing things and I love talking about that. And I think that comes across in my videos. So, you know, sharing your passion for whatever it is that you're talking about is so important. So this is what I'm talking about when I say the technical bit, the interesting bit and the emotional bit. The technical bit is literally just putting your videos together. The interesting bit is whatever it is you've got to talk about. So this, uh, this content creator here is interested in gardening. So she's got over a million likes on that video. That's amazing. Um, and then the emotional bit is the the connection you create with your audience, like get involved in the comments, create shareable content, like really like get in there in your community. And if you don't already have one, then create one. How can you build a community on TikTok? Well, as I've banged on about already, authenticity is key. I can't stress that enough. Uh, we've already gone over it, so I'm not going to talk about it more, but the great thing about being authentic is it doesn't require a budget. You don't need a big budget as well. Um, which again is another reason that it's so accessible to people as content creators and also for the audience as well. Um, research other content within your niche by all means, take inspiration, look and see what other people are doing. But don't be afraid to do your own thing. Don't be afraid to to not follow a trend um one thing i haven't talked about so far is how big trends are on tiktok and that's fantastic you can really use them to build your account and as long as you can make them relevant for your interest then that's great but to me trends aren't actually the be all and end all as long as your content is authentic which i have said so many times now um find a formula that works and continue to evolve it so this is where you need to put the graft in this is where you really need to work not to sound like kim kardashian mother <laughs> but um develop your own style formula and practice 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 find a formula of video that works for you whether that's the length of the video whatever content you put in there whatever word you use go for it and evolve it as the app changes because it will tiktok is constantly evolving and so is your audience so consider that as you if you if you make any kind of content planning in the future or anything like that these are uh, a very, again a very small selection of businesses that i think do that really well on tiktok they're true to their brand um they very much talk about their products but they do it in a way that interests people on tiktok they get people's interest a lot of you watching this have probably already seen some of Duolingo's um, TikToks and they're a bit mad, they're a bit crazy, they don't make all that sense, but they work for that brand. So these are three sort of excellent, um, excellent examples of that. And lastly, the most important bit of advice I can give you is to enjoy the process. Just enjoy what you're doing, because if you don't, there's absolutely no point. People can tell if you're not enjoying what you're doing. Um, don't worry too much about numbers because I honestly believe that quality, quality over quantity every time. That's all what that's everything I'm about when I create content. Don't worry if you're not getting a million views on a video, that's fine. As long as you're getting the views from the right sort of people, that matters more. And thank you very much. That was my eight minute lightning talk. I don't know how long it actually lasted. <laughs> Um, but uh, thank you so much. If you want to learn more about O Agency, then please visit our website. If you want to collect, uh, connect with me on LinkedIn, then please do. And if you'd like to follow me on uh, TikTok, that's my ad. <laughs> thank you so much, Joe. Love it. Thank you so much, Rebecca. I think um, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of appetite in the chat feature right now for for a much longer. Uh, TikTok talk and uh, thank you as well for that it felt like a real sort of whistle stop tour on everything that felt truly important I love that about these talks is that you can nail in on the things that feel really really important do it quickly so that authenticity point point came through loud and clear so thank you so much for that <laughs> um let's move on uh super quick uh so next one uh we have uh phil so phil it's over to you with your advanced uh zooming my friend <laughs> <laughs> thanks Joe. um i think i was the only person that decided to think oh let's put my face on it i don't know why but uh here we are <laughs> so yeah morning everyone i'm phil uh founder of personal brand engagement here 
<clears throat> sorry, of Osai. Um, and I'm super excited to talk to you all about the compound effect of personal branding. So when you think of the term personal branding, what comes to mind? What would happen if I added the phrase compound uh, effect after it? But you've never heard these phrases being used in the same sentence. Um, I know this because when I speak to CEOs and heads of marketing, I always get a puzzled look when I try and explain the concept to them. However, there are a few that do understand this concept and understand the power behind it. And I'm sure you've heard of at least one of these brands. Why? Chances are you've heard of the founder, maybe the uh, manager, or possibly even one of the interns. So it's a really interesting idea when you start to look at the effects of building the reputation of staff in unison. So especially with the aligned objectives, uh, the effect this has on company culture, brand awareness, talent retention, and most importantly, top line revenue is pretty enormous. And um, I've been fascinated by this for a while now. So that's the reason this mini agency exists. So I've been running Osai for probably a few months now. Um, funny name for a personal branding agency, which even named it after myself. <laughs> um, but the aim is to build personal brands of forward thinking founders and CEOs, but also their teams. So from senior leadership to sales to even executive level. So there aren't actually many agencies of this kind. So it is a bit uncharted territory, but uh, it's, it's nerve wracking, but just as exciting. I mean, that's what marketing is all about, right? So yeah, seeing how brands and agencies like Thursday and Rise at Seven who have benefited from compounded personal brands, I want to run a little experiment for myself to see this effect in action. So um, Neat Mills, the subject of my crazy experiment, who is the founder of Tapin, it's a media agency with the uh, objective of helping 100 million young people get into the world of work. So it's all pretty exciting stuff. The other two guinea pigs, uh, guinea pigs in this uh, experiment is creative director Louis and account manager Derek. So the early results of this, uh, this study has been pretty fascinating and I'm more than happy to share it with anyone that's interested to see the full results. But I just want to focus on last week's uh, results and the two main takeaways I've got uh, that I'd love to share with you all. So number one is post performance. So the three accounts resulted in a combined reach of 115,000 views, uh, 1,300 reactions and 280 comments in the space of uh, five days or a week. But um, when you look at Louis's performance, it's pretty interesting because as Louis has the least work experience and seniority out of the three, he actually had the best results. So he outperformed Derek and Mills in all three categories. Um, and it's crazy to think that he gained 45,000 impressions from a profile that literally has 350 connections. Uh, takeaway number two is opportunities. So a lot of opportunities actually did flood into Mills's profile um, from business leads to speaking opportunities to even uh, recruitment. And many, many of these opportunities can actually be traced back to Louis and Derek's posts. So I guess, from all of this, what, what, what are some things you can take away? I've got three for you. Number one, everyone, regardless of seniority, has something valuable to say. Number two, what's common knowledge to one person may be a game changer to another or very insightful. And number three, personal branding is less about self-improvement and more about self-packaging. So the post that we created derived from diving deep into the personal and professional experience of each of them and sharing that rather than trying to find ways to polish their stories. So these are pretty exciting results and they do support the statistics that on average employees have 10 times more followers and reach than company social accounts. But it doesn't seem to be a widespread concept even when the numbers support this. So I guess the question that comes to mind is, why don't organizations choose to invest in the personal brands of their staff? A large percentage of CEOs don't actually post on social media, um, even though one post from their account could outperform company posts by a ridiculous amount. And uh, furthermore, Sheryl Sandberg, who is the COO at Meta, once said, we don't have brands as individuals and not to bother packaging ourselves as professionals. And it was uh, pretty surprising to hear this from literally the executive at the biggest social media platform in the world. I mean, I've done my homework, don't be wrong, she's, she's active on Facebook, but, uh, to me, I think that's probably part of her contract. She literally doesn't have a profile picture on LinkedIn and has never engaged in the platform. 
And to me, that kind of doesn't make sense because you can only imagine the number of people that are looking to get in touch with her uh, with countless business opportunities. So I guess, how do we get to the bottom um, and the root of the issue and understand what's necessary to spark a change? And I guess it all starts with that cliche word, culture. It's the truth though. I think I've come to realize that this is a leadership challenge as much as it is a marketing challenge and getting buy-in from senior leadership um, will begin that trickle down effect on the rest of the company. So here are three ways to encourage personal branding within your organization. Number one, start with why. So try to align the personal branding vision with the overall mission of the organization. Of course, this is easier when a company is small, but it's still possible with a larger organization. Number two, remain data focused. So show, don't tell. So from my experience, numbers will do more convincing than anything else you can say. And number three, uh, start small and prove the ROI. So no different from the, sorry, I just noticed I've made a mistake on my key takeaways, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll keep going. <laughs> so yeah, so start small is the third one um, and then prove the ROI of personal branding. Uh, so no different from the example I showed with um, tap in, I showed, uh, yeah, so no different from yeah, the early example, I had to first prove the profitability of Mills's personal brand before moving on to Derek's and Louis. Um, so I guess all I'm asking for you to take um, on board from what you've heard today is to understand the untapped potential within your, within your staff and their personal brands and their stories and learnings are worth sharing and will do a lot more for you than dumping your marketing budgets to promote a logo with no face. So I'm putting together a little video playbook that will go into more detail on how to you know, incorporate personal branding step-by-step step into your company. I know us marketers love a good QR code. So uh, yeah, get your phones out, scan the code, and I'll pop you a link when the, uh, the report's live. Thanks for listening. That was a wicked dude. It's so interesting as well. I never really heard anyone speak about it in, in, in that kind of way, but it just makes so much sense. Uh, so thank you for sharing that. I mean, that's exactly the point in these sessions that uh, we can provide something that is short, sharp, well delivered and game changing. So thank you so much, mate. Uh, well, well done. Uh, next up, we have uh, Lauren Deakin uh, from Smudged Brand Management. Uh, so Lauren, uh, it's over to you and like, I, hopefully this is okay to share, but, uh, this is you sort of making a proper good effort after a, a decent <laughs> COVID, uh, stint. So, uh, so if you're good to go, uh, yeah. then... is that good for everyone on the other side? Yeah. Everyone see that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we've got the same screen that we have, uh, pre, but that's cool. Absolutely great. Well, everybody's been wicked before me, so I hope I can, uh, step up to the mark. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so hi everyone um i am lauren uh and this is my kind of eight minute lightning talk and five marketing tips uh, for non-designers and you lovely marketeers as well so uh yes i'm lauren um i am the creative director at smudge brand management um i use my creative thought pattern and passion for all things design uh, to bring brand stories and messages to life through imaginative and memorable designs um graphic design is about Hi. problem solving hello so sorry uh your, your slides aren't progressing so i just wanted to let you know you might need to uh Escape what can you it. what can you see presently we've got your 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 first slide so you may just need to uh, escape out and, and sort of like just go through in in the normal that's it. okay there you go. how's that is that okay that's perfect so now we've got your your second slide that's it okay right we'll do this a different way then <laughs> <laughs> okay so where did I get up to? Um, so yeah, graphic design um, is about problem solving. Um, it's about embracing white space um, and designing for your target audience, essentially. Um, so today, as the creative director, I wanted to give you five marketing tips that you can go away and implement yourself as a, as a non-designer, essentially. So my first, uh, the first thing I wanted to go uh, talk about um, is Canva. Canva is amazing, and I know you non-designers use it. Um, I know a lot, as I said, I know a lot of you use Canva. Um, it's good news. A lot of these practices that I'm going to um, 
show you today uh, tips um, you can you can use in there. However, um, before you do use Canva, um, I do recommend that you already have a well-designed brand first um, and you use it as a tool to then help you build on what you are already doing. Um, this is just uh, because when you are growing a business and slowly becoming established, um, if you don't already have an established brand and brand identity, uh, Canva is not unique enough. Uh, and the whole point of what we do is to stand out um, above our competitors. Uh, so it should be a tool that helps you uh, make your life easier and nothing more, essentially. Um, so it leads me on to my next point with an amazing friend meme who loves a who loves a meme. Um, so. Yeah, moving on to how to design with white using white space, which is really important um, with design. Um, you need white space in your design from a psychological point of view, uh, so your brain doesn't get overwhelmed. Um, it helps give your brain time to process all the information, essentially. Um, if you don't know what white space is, um, it can be any area within a design that is free from text, images or illustration um, and isn't necessarily white in colour, um, which most people get really confused about with white space. They think it's uh, white, but it's not. It can be it can be um, any colour. So. These are some little things that you can implement. So here we go. Uh, so leave uh, space empty. So as you can see, the space around the image and the text, it looks a lot more professional and it literally stands out. And you know what you're looking at and it pops out. And number two, remove borders. Um, it just kind of takes it away. You know, it makes it look a lot crisper, a lot cleaner, and you take the information in a lot um, quicker and easier. Uh, number three, space lettering. Um, so on the second um, example there, you can see that um, the word beginner is spaced out so much easier to read, um, even from far away, actually. You know, that's the other thing you've got to think about. You know, you're not looking at things up close all of the time. Um, so again, compared to the other one, it just looks a lot more professional and a lot cleaner as well. Uh, number four, use colour as a background. This is something that I tend to use um, a lot. Um, it works amazingly with brand colours and obviously um, your, your fonts as well. Um, number five, enlarge the background image. Um, on this one, uh, the text, as you can see, being in the black, it doesn't actually stand out very well. Um, so what you could do there is kind of put a, a, a white kind of block behind, or you could change the color of the text um, and, and then put a color block behind there as, as well. But that works amazingly, especially um, with regards to um, kind of and any brand photography that you do use with them, um, you know, within your, within your brand. Uh, so that leads me on to my next point of brand recognition. So using white space in your design really helps to elevate your brand recognition, uh, which brings me on to this point. Um, a picture essentially paints a thousand words. And when it comes to your brand recognition, it's good uh, to have good clean imagery. So consumers can um, easily um, recognize you. Uh, a simple design style repeated across all touch points with a clear message will very, very quickly um, embed your brand into their minds uh, without the need for gimmicks and design uh, tactics that could actually cheapen your brand. Uh, so for my example here of the lovely Starbucks, we all know who Starbucks is. Uh, you can see, for my example, um, you can see the logo, you know instantly who the brand is, but it also creates that instant uh, connotation of the brand as well uh, and because of the familiarity the, the consumer is more likely to buy your product or service giving you um, that um, essentially that competitive edge as well um, so these are my common design mistakes this is uh, me summarizing um, uh, my eight minute lightning talk um, so to summarize we are only human and we all make mistakes, even myself um, throughout my years as a professional designer. Um, but now as a creative director, um, I have learned from uh, these are some of the mistakes I've learned from. So don't use too much text in your design. Less is more. I have so many people come to me, you know, especially when you're doing your social media posting and they're trying to cram all the images in because and the text because they think, you know, that's what people are going to need. But actually, they're just going to scroll straight past it. So, you know, make sure that it's just really crisp, clean and you get to the point. 
Um, work with the right file formats. So for printing, make sure um, you save your file formats as CMYK um, and digital is RGB. Um, and you organize your fonts, images, and graphics into different folders. There is nothing worse. Um, you know, even if you're, um, you know, a marketeer, you're passing this on to somebody else, you know, other designers to work on, you know, this, the, these files, they all need to be organized. So it's really quick and snappy. Um, and you know where everything is. Um, you are using the correct balance and elements uh, of elements and color so that they look good. Um, and as, as I've already said, um, when it's too busy and cluttered, you won't get any kind of message across and they'll just kind of um, scroll on. Uh, and make sure your design works on desktop as well as on mobile. Um, people don't think about that. I think they think about it for you know, your website, but they don't actually think about it um, for you know, your, your visuals as well. So um, yeah, that's me. Um, if you want to find out more about Smudge Brand uh, Management, you can find us on LinkedIn, Instagram and Facebook. Um, and our website is coming soon. Thank you. Smashed it. Thank you so much, Lauren. That's a real game changer right there. Um, the, well, we've got the first comment there from Jade who says, that has been so useful. <laughs> so, <Hey>. so, <laughs> thank you very much. It was really, really thank helpful. You. Um, uh, just lovely thank you very much um in the interest of time uh, i'm gonna now move on uh, to fiona um we've had a lot of information uh passed to us and we've got about 15 16 17 minutes left so like honestly everyone keep up this energy uh i'm loving the, uh, the chat feature today thank you all so much for this contribution uh, it's making me smile an awful lot uh, so thank you and uh, Fiona uh, it's over to you thank you very much so this is all about freelancing so uh, I set up my content marketing agency um, well business two years ago as a freelancer and was named freelancer of the year 2021 and 2022 and freelancing was the best thing that I ever did. So I'm super passionate about helping others break into the freelance space or setting up their own business. So uh, the pros are why we do it right. So we, we got this idea of the freelance dream in mind, you know, working from anywhere, choosing who we work with. You can outsource all those shitty bits of admin that your boss would probably have a heart attack if he found out you were paying someone on Upwork to do on your behalf. And you can set your own rates. You know, if you're able to provide more value to clients, you can increase that accordingly. And also, if you just really hate people or you're super introverted in your work, you don't thrive in an office environment, then you can work nocturnally and that's totally okay. Lots of people do it in the development space. And the pros of hiring and working with freelancers are that you can get highly specialized talent and it's often a lot more economical, especially for smaller businesses to hire someone on a consultancy basis, maybe one, two days a week than having a full-time employee. And it's a heck of a lot less admin and a lot less risk as well. There are some cons to be aware of just before you kind of take that leap, Biggest one, don't do the work, you don't get paid. So things like holidays, bank holidays, sick days, unless you're outsourcing, you're not going to earn any money for those. You also need to do your own taxes and pensions. Um, and, but you, the biggest thing that I found was loneliness. I mean, I was working from this room on my own remotely for 18 months. And, you know, it kind of gets you, you want someone to bounce ideas off to check your work. And now I have a co-working space. I use Reef to book into local cafes, things like that. And I built a community and networks online to overcome that. The first step to setting up to realize if, you know, freelancing business owning is for you is defining your goal. So here are some questions that I pitch to every single person who's ever messaged me. Uh, Fiona, I'm thinking about starting my business or I think about uh, thinking about going freelance or anything. Um, I actually asked Phil all these questions a few months back. So the first one is, what do you want like from your career and your life? Like, do you want more time with the kids? Do you want to travel? Do you want that ownership and success? Or do you want to get really, really good at one thing that you really enjoy with work? Or do you just hate your boss? Want to pay rise? Want to work in a different department or want to work on different clients? Because that last list you can get through employment. So have you, uh, have you, Ex exhausted all your options for getting all that kind of stuff within your current role or something similar because 
I refused to stay in my box. I had too many ideas, too many passions, which made me a terrible employee, but a great business owner. So freelancing was really the direction I needed to go in. Could you be a business owner? Because you're no longer a marketer. You're, a, you're running a business. So you need to be in charge of all your accounting, but also all your own marketing, your branding, your website, your tone of voice, all that kind of stuff. So if that excites you, how comfortable are you with shameless self-promotion? Because you could be God's gift to paid media, but if no one knows who you are, then you're never going to make any money out of it. Would you be able to cope if all your clients ran away from you tomorrow or to be a bit less dramatic if you had a quiet period? Because when people first start freelancing, they talk about this feast famine cycle um, of, you know, the work all comes in then the project finishes. But you can get over this if you're constantly investing in your personal brand, you're on top of your business development and you can keep that pipeline topped up. Also, having clients on a retainer basis, not just a project basis, helps keep that flow of work coming. And finally, what's stopping you? Is it something practical like you need your website, you need a logo, you need a business name, anything like that? You need to actually resign first. Um, or is it something mental? So if you had all the time and resources in the world, what's holding you back? Are you scared of what people would think? Is it a bit of imposter syndrome where we've got a specific knowledge gap? So who would you need to speak to to overcome that? Or is there a practical step that you could take later today like setting up your domain on GoDaddy or something so if all that sounds good the first actual step to getting registered you need to get legally established so this is kind of the boring bit but you need to set yourself up online as a sole trade or a limited company and you need to get business insurance get personal indemnity insurance airtight contract and invoice template and set up all your accounting stuff zero QuickBooks or just pay someone else to do that and then the next one is defining your offering. So what are you actually going to sell? What the, what the hell are you going to ask people to pay you for? Um, the best thing to go with is what you're good at and what do you enjoy doing? And how are you going to price that? You can price by the word, by the hour, by the day, and by the package, by the lead. There's so many ways to price up services. Then you want to build a portfolio. This doesn't have to be anything fancy on a website. You literally just need something to show a potential client what you can do and what you're capable of. So set up your own blog, set up your own page, start collecting results from the clients that you're working with at the minute or any kind of referrals from other people that you've worked with previously. And then the easy part, just, you know, go get some clients, go start making some money. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> that's the uh, most common question that I get asked is where can I find these clients um so I've run a booked out business for two years I've not sent a single cold email so you want to be going through your phone book let everyone and their dog know exactly what you're doing and what you're offering because even if they don't need it they might know someone else who does um also make friends with other freelancers because nobody's going to be doing the exact same thing you do for the same price, for the same people in the same way. They're not your competition and you can pass referrals back and forth that way. And also networking has been huge for me because if you're a freelancer or an agency owner or anything in the services industry, you are your product. So you need to get comfortable with that shameless self-promotion and talking about what you offer as a person rather than what your company could potentially do for someone else. So you might wanna screenshot this, but I'll share it on Twitter later. Here are some super useful resources that I found uh, when upskilling myself and, and everything like that. So I'll share it on Twitter afterwards, but uh, thank you very much. Bye. Smashed it. <laughs> Thank you very, very much, Fiona. Like, I, there was a lot of people in the, the chat feature there just resonating uh, with an awful lot of what you said uh, and your experiences. So, uh, love it. Absolutely love it. So, thank you very, very much. It's also wicked to have you involved, having uh, known that you've attended so many events in the past, too. Uh, so, uh, we're on to the last one. Uh, so, uh, Jody uh, from the business allotment. Uh, it's over to you. And I think you're the only one that's have been super, super brave and you don't have any slides, right? Yeah, I'm kind of already regretting that decision now. To be absolutely <laughs> frank with you. But it's too late to do anything about that. So we're just going to go for it. <laughs> go for it. It's, it's over to you. 
Good morning, everybody. Jody from, from the Business Allotment. And my eight minutes is all about helping you get more of these light bulb moments. I want you to be getting more ideas, bigger ideas, better ideas, and feed that to everything that you do. I'm going to give you three ideas to help you get better ideas. And if I say ideas more than a thousand times, we all win a prize. Right. So idea one, creative workouts. These are short, punchy um, exercises just to help you flex your creative muscles, get you in that creative mindset, do them regularly. You'll have come across this one, but it is a classic for a reason. It's divergent thinking. You set your timer for one minute and you say how many uses for a paper clip and you go wild. You push that creative boat out. And the more you row that boat out into new thinking territory, the better your creative muscle will get. You're honing your creative thinking skills every time you do one of these exercises. I challenge you to do a 30 day creative workout um, every morning before you sit at your desk. It will just shift your thinking before you get into your day. I run creative workouts before I do any team exercise, any team meeting, client meeting, where I know we need to be creative and come up with ideas. You can't expect to run a marathon without training. Don't expect to have brilliant creative ideas without training as well. So creative workouts are your friend. Get them in your business muscle. I promise you it will change the way you think creatively. Idea two is about framing the challenge you need to solve. OK, so I've seen lots of marketing briefs, business strategy briefs, business change briefs, lots and lots of pages stacked full of information, background information, demographics, target audience, all lovely stuff, all very relevant, all absolute creativity killers. What I want you to do is get your marketing brief, you pop it in a pot, you boil it down, I've got Odelia, boil it down to its very, very essence. That essence is one single short sentence, starting with the words how to, that fit on a post-it note when written with a Sharpie. So a couple of words about the words, and I'm bragging now, the size of my post-it notes. This could be what you write, how to create uplift of newsletter subscribers by 18% and increased click through by eight. I mean, I'm boring myself. And any creative juices you had are now dribbling out of a nearby orifice. Take some time to craft a punchy headline that excites your creative juices. How to create an unmissable, talked about, inspiring newsletter. This will get you better ideas. People sitting around the table, they'll stop doodling, they'll start thinking creatively. So take some time to craft an amazing, amazing punchy headline that distills your marketing brief into one single-minded how-to statement. Okay, idea three, this is where we get down to the good stuff and actually start generating some brilliant creative ideas. So here is your marketing challenge. See, it's a knotty one. Sorry, that was terrible. Um, so. We've all been there. We stare at our marketing challenge. We stare at it with good intent and all the best intentions and will some ideas into existence. And some will come and they will be similar ideas to the ideas you've had before. And you can even put this in the middle of the table, have your whole team stare at it for upwards of an hour. And they will still come up with ideas similar to the ideas that they've come up with before. So I want to talk you through two creativity principles that will change the way you come up with ideas for your briefs. The first one is juxtaposition. You want to put something utterly random next to your business challenge or your marketing challenge. So my random spark, as I call them, is a rubber duck. I don't know if I had to tell you what that was, but anyway, if anyone's got their eyes shut at this point, I'm holding up a rubber duck. So what happens in your head? It sets up creative dissonance. Your head does not like two things sitting so close together that don't relate. So your creative kind of part of your brain will start just musing on the concept of duck. Go with me on this. It may sound something like this. Oh, duck. Interesting. Oh, I'm in a bath. Oh, I'm relaxing. Oh, how about we do a newsletter that you could only read in the bath? Well, that's quite interesting. Maybe we fill it with really relaxing, soulful news. Or perhaps we, well, could we have a relaxing soundtrack with our newsletter? Well, maybe our newsletter is a Spotify playlist. 
what about those ducks that are all different themes and costumes? Maybe our newsletter should be different themes and costumes. So when they're on the digital shelf, they build into an amazing collection that everyone wants to get hold of and so on and so on. Once you're on the duck thought trade, there is no stopping you. Random sparks are your friend. They will always instigate fresh thinking. Once you're done with the duck and you've exhausted that poor duck, you just pick up another random spark and you go again. So juxtaposition is a fantastic way of moving your creative thinking to the next level. The other creative concept I wanted to quickly run past you is about new perspectives. So you are looking at your marketing challenge through the same set of eyeballs. That's OK, but it will get you the same set of ideas. What you need to do is shift your perspective. So you need to step into somebody else's shoes. You can step into anybody or anything's shoes. I love stepping into other brands' shoes. So here's our newsletter challenge. How would Innocent Smoothie solve that challenge? Well, obviously they put a stupid tiny knitted hat on it, wouldn't they? But that's quite interesting because what if the knitted hat, you know, being handmade, maybe we could hand make our newsletter. Maybe we could have our clients to hand make our newsletter or crowdsource our newsletter from our clients. Love that, means no work for us. At the point at which you shift perspective, you generate new ideas that you just would not have come up with through your own eyeballs, standing in your own shoes. I ran an idea generation session for a marketing agency. They were working on a pitch for a high street retailer. I handed out photos of celebrities and I asked them to stand in those celebrity shoes and solve the problem at hand. Someone was clutching, I mean, far too tightly for my liking, a picture of the lovely David Beckham. And they said, well, I wish I was standing in his bloody shoes for the day. And that idea of standing in your sporting hero shoes for the day won that agency the pitch. Shoes are magic. So always jump into somebody else's shoes to help solve your problem. You can jump into different professions. How would an artist solve this newsletter challenge? Well, they'd probably throw in an NFT, wouldn't they? And if I knew what an NFT was, I'd be significantly richer than I am now. Or it could be a perfumier. How would a perfumier solve this newsletter challenge? Well, they'd make the first brand smell newsletter. Joe, that's one for you. There's already been chat about it in the, uh, in the chat today about the TMM ascent. So shifting perspective Getting a different view of your marketing challenge by standing in somebody else's shoes will always generate you better ideas, more ideas, and you won't run out of ideas because there's plenty of shoes out there to jump into. So what are the takeaways from today's session? Your first takeaway, practice your creative workouts. Get them in the muscle. It will change the quality of your thinking. Takeaway two, punchy, single-minded headlines. It's worth its weight in gold. Tiny, really potent sentences that excite the creative brain, sum up what you're trying to solve. And finally, get yourself a box of creative thinking tools. That's the best takeaway I can give you. I'm going to pop a link in the chat with some uh, links to free resources to help you do just that. So hopefully you can get many more of these. <laughs> that was insane how big is your table <laughs> I, I literally cannot see over my mountain of props <laughs> that's incredible i hope you can see the chat feature right now people are adoring you people asking to be your friends I'm, I'm pretty sure there'll be a marriage proposal in a minute lovely I mean my husband's sitting behind that screen but I'll ditch him I'll take whoever's in the chat <laughs> we were expecting uh large there was at least two comments of people saying your walls are actually just post-it notes although there is a, a slight disappointment that actually the plant didn't come into it at the end you know as, as like a, as a, as the final hurrah but honestly <laughs> there we go Jennifer one of the best presentations I've ever seen so so there you go what a way to finish honestly folks thank you all so so much for such an amazing session can in the chat feature you know can we just get a big thank you to to all of our speakers for today because honestly what a bloody brilliant morning um like just i don't know i'm lost for words i, I love that 
I absolutely loved that. And I loved it because of the speakers and I loved it because of how amazing all of you were in the chat feature too. So thank you all so much. Uh, this is the spirit of community. This is the spirit of co-creation. Um, so I just can't be any more bloody grateful. What a great way to start the day. Um, so, uh, as ever, you know, it would be amazing, like on the back of today, you know, if you are able to share on social media, you know, a, a takeaway or two from today's session, if you could also say a thank you to the folks at Content Square, just for being amazing and supporting our community, um, that would be incredible. Thank you all so blooming much for this session. Uh, well done to all the speakers. Yeah, absolutely echoing what Catches just said in the chat feature. Um, thank you all. And uh, we'll see you next Tuesday. We're not that far away. It's Thursday today. So next Tuesday is the last webinar of season six uh, with Jeremy Connell Waite. Uh, many of you will know uh, him from last time and uh, it was amazing. So thank you all so much. Have a wicked day and uh, we'll see you very soon. Take care.